the art and teaching of presence. That was the difference between you and other yoga teachers that I go to, is like the second that you walked in the room, I could feel that you were in the room and the energy shifted. And I've learned more from your silence than any of your words. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Gosh, I feel that. Thank you, Lissy. Thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> and you got good style, that's why you made it on the show. <laughs> There are people who live and create from the heart. Some do it with style. So many people mm. come to New York with their dreams. They tend to have an intense drive from a very deep place. What I feel so often is that as humans, as a collective, we're not actualizing our creative potential. I think the main point for actualizing our creative potential has to do with being willing to collaborate and being willing to ask for help. There is no way that I would have gotten anywhere had I not asked for help along the way, had I not been willing to partner up with, for example, my co-author on my book, Erica Jago. I was about to have no part of no book, except now I have 50% of the most exquisite Beautiful. book. I can't even stand Talk it about still. style. She <laughs> is Epic. just so gifted. Yeah. When we collaborate with each other, we end up making more of what we have. And I think that is the key to actualizing our highest dream. I really do. What are some of the tools that you've learned along the way, on the mats and while coaching? I think one of the best tools, it applies to parenting, but it also applies to living in relationship of any kind with a friend or with a spouse or partner, um, is to always check in and ask how you're doing. You can get feedback from your partner or your parent or your kid and say, you know, was there anything I could have done better today? That's like one of the one of the biggest deals for me in terms of making sure that my heart, my mind, and my spirit are all on the same page. And that's a real precise tool, something you can do every day. Another tool that I've learned is to listen well. How do we do that? <laughs> You have to just practice. It's sort of like playing the piano and getting to Carnegie Hall. There's only one way. If I don't practice listening, I'm not going to be good at it. Then I'm practicing listening to the voice in my own head, which is not telling me the truth about anything. Right. I'm not listening to what's happening around me, and so I can't really get the whole picture. So the tool is practice listening. It is the most important thing we can do. It doesn't matter with whom we're in, what relationship. It is listening that is going to answer and heal everything. Including listening to our own hearts. For sure, yes. And, and that's also a practice. You can't just listen to your own heart, but you have to know how to do that, and you have to know how to do it well. Let's see, I think I had a, a third one. Oh, oh, be a good friend. Be a good friend. Show up. Show up for your friends. Yeah. It will always help. You know, even when you're feeling super low and you feel like, nobody's showing up for me. <laughs> you show up for your friends. When you're feeling like nobody's showing up for you, you're giving more love when you feel like you want more, you're going to generate more. It's going to come right back to you. Be a good friend. That, those are three good tools I've learned on this little path here. There's so many, but those are three good ones. Ask yourself what it is that your practice brings to your life. Beginning to step back and allow your spirit to orchestrate things and holding yourself here.